Welcome to the Nakalos Workshop. I'm Paul. In today's video we're going to continue the disassembling of the uh, Unimat SL lathe. Hi everyone, I hope you're well. Uh, so today uh, we're disassembling the um, compound slide of the uh, Unimat SL lathe and as you can see I've already done it. Um, the main reason for this was um, I was having a bit of trouble doing it and once I had disassembled it it um, seemed a bit crazy to reassemble it and I'll explain why I chose uh, not to do that. So apologies that it's slightly different from the other ones. Um, also I'll do a part B to this video um, with the uh, power feed because again I'm having troubles getting that one apart and um, it's a bit of a challenge because I'm halfway between uh, I've got equipment here I've got oh, tools here I've got tools in the workshop and we got every, every time I try to do something it seems to be in the wrong place so uh, just bear with me for uh, uh, these two videos and then we should be uh, exclusively at the workshop okay so let's have um let's have a look so as we know uh, we've got the two uh, the two bars that effectively become the way oh, not very good with my hand and i um let's move that here so we've got the two two bars that that effectively the uh this slides are up and down on so the thing is so to disassemble this what you need to do is on the back here there are two two very small screws scrub screws and so uh, you just have to dig them out and um, clean all the all the guns out of there and then remove those now this is definitely a candidate to um, clean it before you try to remove it so then once once you've um, undone those screws then it's a case of um, this is a press fit into these the these two here and here yeah so logic well my logic would suggest that if you're going to not you know you could arguably knock it either way through either way but my logic would suggest that it will be far better to that the end with the grub screw is more likely to be slightly larger than the end with it with it um, without it therefore going that way is probably not advised because you're pushing the whole length of the bar through the press fit whereas if you go this way what you're then doing is you're only knocking affecting the press fit as a small amount as you go through and then come through this way now this is only theory because I actually did it the other way before I actually I realized I wasn't doing it um, what I believe is logically the correct, correct way so obviously I've got another one of these on the other SL which I'm going to use for uh, a milling machine um, so I will try it again and if going the other way if it is um, a problem I'll make sure I add something to the comments um, to make sure uh, no one falls into that trap but I think my logic is um, sound that we should go this way so you're actually going in the direction that the hand will um, sits. So th there was one bolt there that just tightens up the uh, the clamp. Where so um, that that's just normal uh, five mil Allen key. Um, so then we've got the uh, the spindle for the um, to to make the. The, uh, the slide move back and forward well, and you would have the tool post on there so as normal you're going to have one left hand or oh, that's a right hand thread that's a left hand thread so that that actually goes into uh, 
the center and the threaded parts there and onto the hand wheel and it's it's uh, held on with the normal nut that we've seen when we took the uh, lead screw out um, <coughs> so um, yeah that's really really about it um, so the other thing to consider is how you're going I mean the last thing you because everything slides on this you want to protect these these surfaces so that's that's got to be your your primary uh, objective not not to mess these up on the way out so mole grips or anything like that uh, it's not it's not something you want to entertain so I think the um, so as, as I said earlier doing some pre-cleaning would make sense because you have got to go through through the um, through these bearings surfaces and and, and as, as we always say or as I always say on uh, the SL if there's a flaw that's it you can't actually repair anything once you've messed it up so it you, you don't want to be dragging grit and everything through and you don't want to be grasping these with mole grip so you're effectively messing up these surfaces that are, are pretty important um, so things to consider is that um, you probably want to punch because as it comes through um, you're still you you're still um, I had to knock it knock it all the way through therefore um, you do need a punch that's going to be at least that that long to to actually get it you could arguably go in that way but again you're putting stresses so I think it's important to um, prepare that you can put it through that so far and clamp it in the vise as long as you've got uh, soft jaws and you're not going to mess up this bearing surface so just things to consider um, I didn't have a punch long enough so that made it um, uh, more of a challenge but I did have, do in the workshop I did or I do have a vice with uh, soft jaws so that um, allowed me to um, effectively just clamp it in the vice and pull it out so that was uh, that was it you know so anyway that's that's really the um, the process to disassemble that it's relatively simple but just be aware of the points I've made that um, the last thing you want to do is uh, um, damage anything as you're, as you're disassembling it so the what I'm going to attempt to do tomorrow um, um, I'm in the workshop I'm going to try and um, complete the disassembling disassembling of the um, power feed uh, attachment and get that one um, out later this week video for you and then and then we should then uh, start to be able to focus on um, cleaning the um, all the component parts um, and and inspecting them okay well that's about it so uh, thanks for watching and um, stay uh, happy strong and healthy cheerio